Welcome to the Tech School Podcast, Lisa, Jason, Gail, what's going on? <laughs> Carlos, I'm Josh. Joining us is Tabitha Faith Wright, a former student here at DSDT who is doing some amazing work. She can't tell us her location because she's doing very important work. Tabitha, hello to you. Hello, hello everyone. It's a great day to be IT. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great day indeed, Tabitha. And let's start off with the beginning. You've never stepped foot here at DSDT, but you've had an amazing experience. Take us to day one. Okay, day one is um, working in 911 with a lot of computers and with contracted ITs for you know the Motorola systems the radios that need to be used and the system and software that needs to be used to efficiently get people help. And I was working for the Department of Defense for the Navy in Jacksonville, Florida for the Southeast region. Okay, so we had six monitors. I'm always helping coworkers just because I just knew how to work the computer and the software with different basic elements and co-workers older and younger than me and veterans advised like they would keep making comments you know like why aren't you at IT and I'm like you know what I don't know and I was like you know what on my days off I'm going to enroll in IT program so I enrolled in IT program I shot through Tech Pro 6 for DSDT, no problem. Had great support from Jason Chapman and Lisa. Don't know Lisa's last name right now. <laughs> it's okay, no one does, it's all right. <laughs> and um, with follow-up and constant communication and support and advice and push and drive, and building a positive rapport, I'm an IT now, and I have no complaints about it. It's, I feel comfortable, and this whole time, I was an IT and didn't know what I needed a push, and I transitioned. You just have to keep that drive and that positive thinking and you know, build an interpersonal relationship. And being that I'm all the way in the Southeast region and I had no background physically in IT, just personal background in IT, just tech savvy from childhood, that I feel very successful and I feel like I'm a family of DSDT actually. And I live in, in the other side of the United States. So crazy. Crazy indeed, Tabitha. What made you comfortable enrolling at enrolling in DSDT, not ever stepping foot on campus? Not ever being inside the school? What made me feel comfortable were the first people that I spoke to at DST DSDT via phone, which was Lisa and I think her sister. It was two other. Jamie. Yes, Jamie, Lisa, and there was another person, but I can't remember her name at this point. And then Jason kind of fell right after them, like right immediately. So that that they made me feel very comfortable and very. I want to say, like you can do it. Like, you can do it. <laughs> you don't actually have the hands on background, but you can do it. Like, you can transition into this career without a problem with follow up and staying on task and just being positive. Here's a question, Tabitha. How did you even hear of or come into contact with DSDT? You know what? I don't want to say this. Too late. But it was social. But it was social media. Social media. That's correct. Okay. Fair enough. Why is that a bad thing? 
because I'm not really on social media. I only get on there if someone sends me a message. But the the fact that you found this great institution that was a good fit for you on social media is a sign of the times. That is correct. However, you know, in these days and times, social media, you know, has a lot of conflicting things going on. So I was like, DSDT, hmm, interesting. Let me click on that. Wait, 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 wait. No. So was it something that was shared with you or it was an ad? No, it was, it was, it was streaming in my uh, timeline because I was already taking IT courses through Cybrary. Okay. Um, so you know how Google actually, anything you search or do in your Google Chrome, it like it records what you're searching and looking for. So I guess since Google Chrome saw what I was doing through that company, yeah. then other IT companies started to flow through my timeline. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. I want to bounce nice. things over to Jason because Jason, you worked with Tabitha on amplifying her resume, getting it focused to the positions she, she was seeking. Yeah, absolutely. So every student goes through that process of uh, rebranding, so to speak, and utilizing their experience uh, to leverage into the new career. Uh, it's, it's a quick process. It's not hard. It's just a matter of, you know, going through the steps that we've created here. Um, so, you know, resume, making sure the keywords are What are, are in some there. of the keywords? Keywords? Um, specific to the job description, any job description, there's going to be keys to winning in there. Mm -hmm. um, so um, preferred, uh, you know, technologies like Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, that's like a great example of uh, something you need to put into your resume if that job description requires it. So are we saying tech companies have systems where they're able to pull this resume, that resume, because it has keywords that fit their job descriptions? Yeah, there's actually like AI Yeah, Yeah, they applicants. have them, it's called Carlos. Oh. Carlos can oh. do it! <laughs> listen, listen, listen. So a few months ago, I actually uh, hired a, an admin or admissions representative. And the reason I hired him was because in his resume, he said, I can sell water to a whale. Ooh. Now, come on, you don't need any it's type a cliche. of algorithm. To, you come across a statement like that, it's like, yeah, let me interview this person to see what they're about. Wait, 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 he actually had that written on his resume? He had it in his resume. I can sell water to a well. And, and mind you, Carlos, like the Carlos system, that stood out to me. I like You that. know, because after you've read so many times the same redundant keywords, that is different. It is different. So it got him the interview. It got him the job. But here's where the rubber meets the road. When you're talking about a student who's being trained at DSDT, they're working with top-notch talent such as Jason in order to get them employment opportunities, when you show up, you better show out, mm. right? If you tell me that you can sell water to a whale, then believe <laughs> me, if I hire you, I expect that. Unfortunately, in his instance, he couldn't, right? Bluff. So Tabitha actually ex exemplifies what it takes to really break in. Mm -hmm. That's that attitude, that curiosity, that ambition, using every possible resource. And uh, what we did was actually just make sure she got through the robotic part of it, of processing like the applicant tracking systems that match those keywords. And then we also appropriately rebrand her into the resume, LinkedIn, and, uh, and and taught her how to use that, right? Because, you know, every organization will tell you, you have to have a LinkedIn profile, but, and then they walk away and never teach how you how to How do you master using LinkedIn? Well, you wanna, first of all, fill out what is called an all-star profile with, you, with a, you know, healthy about section, same applicant tracking systems that work on those career building sites and, uh, and, and indeed uh, also are on LinkedIn, right? So recruiters and hiring managers are you know, upgrading their uh, their uh, profiles to get that business profile, that recruiting profile, so they can find candidates like Tabitha um, every day, right? So 
you do those two steps and then you start to build a personal network, um, you know, maybe you don't get that job right when it comes out, but that hiring manager and that recruiter, anyone that worth their salt that plays in that field is going to remember Tabitha for that next time around because, you know, we, we have a, a thing called speed to market when it comes uh, to hiring. So, you know, it's more or less be ready when it happens, you know, and, and be able to, to walk the walk, so to speak. And that takes time. Sail right? water to a whale. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So I wanted to just interject for a minute. We know the role that Jason plays, right? We also want you to share with everybody who's going to be watching this, the journey that you have through DSDT, meaning the interaction. I, what I really want to stress to future students is that we build a relationship and we are with you the entire time or duration of your classes here. So whether it is a quick reach out, whether it is a quick text, whether it is you didn't show up for class, whether it is, you know, we, there's such a great interaction between all of us here that we're on top of it. We're on, we are helping you to stay on track to be successful. And I think that um, if you could elaborate on that just a, just a touch so our future students can understand what we do here at DSDT that sets us aside from other trade schools, because I don't necessarily know whether you've gone to college or not prior to this, but I, I have a feeling that there aren't very many schools who do the things that we do. And that I really want to elaborate on, if you could for a minute. Okay, Lisa. <laughs> I'm gonna give you all the top star, the golden seal. Yes, I've been to three other trade colleges. Um, I might not look or sound like it, but I'm 40 years old. However, you don't look a day over 22. There you go. This school, I've been to multiple schools, multiple trade schools, Arizona, Virginia, Florida, Florida again. I'm not going to, you know, I'm just keep it vague for the schools, but DSDT by far was the most efficient, helpful, supportive trade school that I've, and college and community college and state universities that I've had the most success and comfortability with. And that is why I'm here now to where I am, to where I wanted to be and didn't even know I wanted to be there. And it just makes me feel, what was I missing? But then again, to reflect on DSDT, it is the staff, it's the professionalism, the, the professionalism, the the following up, the calling, the phone calls, the checking on you, the support, the emails, and just building rapport that a lot of those colleges and universities that I've already attended while I was active duty did not do. And I'm happy about it. I work in two jobs. I'm actually stressing myself out right now because I have two IT jobs and a third one pending. <laughs> because I, I, I need to try to, I need to, so, someone, I, I'm going to have to let someone go because I need to uh, manage my own personal time. You also need to sleep if you're doing top secret jobs for the federal government. You need to be well rested. Right. Right, exactly. And I am like, I'm jumping from computer to computer. I'm like, okay, I want to do it. I don't want to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. But I need, can I get a break real quick? Real quick. <laughs> Thanks, Tabitha, for the accolades. That's awesome. Thank you. We're glad that we, we've been a part of your journey and you've been awesome to work with too. And, you know, I like to uh, always say it's, it's great that we build relationships. And just because you're now working for other companies doesn't mean that we all won't stay in touch indefinitely. And, and that's what we hope for. Oh, well, Lisa, you and Jason don't have a, a option. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank life. you. Thank you. Tabitha, thank you for your time. Thank you for the great work that you're doing. We greatly appreciate it. Get some rest because you are doing important work for the federal government. So you have to be rested, sister, at all times. Great. Correct. 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 Greatly appreciate you. Great to speak with you. That will do it for Lisa, Jason, Gail hanging out in the back. Carlos, I'm Josh. See you.